his head, draw his shoulders in, and rotate his pelvis forward, and that lets this muscle come Relax. down. Mm -hmm. So then they can get away from this pressure. Most saddles set too far forward. That's the back of the horse's shoulder blade right there. If you sit your saddle up on the shoulder, when that horse puts his foot forward, his shoulder moves like a pendulum. It elevates and comes back, elevates and comes forward. Every time it comes back. So if your saddle's sitting on top of the shoulder, internally and they are what elevate your shoulder. So that's why this will affect the top of your neck. The other thing that happens is your shoulder gets pulled in and up against the body. There's another muscle that runs from the front of the shoulder blade attaches to the first the back of your first vertebra. Well now your shoulder blade is pulling on the back of your first vertebra which then sets up the rest of your neck to get sore. Um, they rotate this pelvis forward to let this muscle drop down, well then that puts these gluteal muscles into a, a place where they're not naturally made to be. Pelvis is meant to sit like that with the gluteal muscles on top of it. Well now it's rotating forward, so those gluteal muscles are pulling back onto themselves. And then they start to work against your hamstring muscles instead of with your hamstring muscles. And that's why you get a lot of hamstring and high end problems, but everything here and here is secondary, it nearly always comes from here. This, this is always your cause. I, I tell people, if you said you, you can only work on 10 places on my horse, this would be where I worked. I wouldn't work anywhere else. You don't let me work 10 places, I could do more for a horse working right here than I could do anywhere else. Simply because this affects the way the horse naturally travels and it puts him outside of his natural frame. So then he starts breaking his own body down because he's working in an unnatural frame that he's not designed to work with it. And that's why it affects the whole body. Yeah. But that, that's basically how it works and your saddle has to sit on this muscle here and you can see how much atrophy this mare has here. When you put your hands here and here and that's the same muscle and see the two different planes that my hand is on should be the same because it's one muscle be like this and see how she drops down off this shoulder into the back it shouldn't be like that that's Whoa. that muscle is atrophied it should be it's a nice smooth line not this big drop off and you see here on her shoulder how pulled in the front of her shoulder is compared to the back here that's when they're pulling the shoulder up against the rib cage pulling it in and to pull that shoulder in they have to elevate their head and that away. <clears throat> it shouldn't look like that, it should be more like this through here. And you can see, you can see the difference from here to here, is from here to here. If you cut a horse in half and then cut him in half this way, yeah. and this part here never matches the other parts, it always looks more, well to me it looks atrophied, but I don't, you know, to people think, oh my horse has got a big wither. Well, he shouldn't have a big wither. It's not natural for them to have a big wither. <clears throat> yeah, but but aren't some horses born that way though? Um, born that way, yes. And the you reason know, is because this. I can. Here, I understand what you're saying. <clears throat> you know, some of the other stuff causes it to stay like that. So if they're born like that, then you keep, but then not. You keep it down where Here's it Here's the difference, and I have two horses that are exactly opposite. What makes a wither big or tall is the length of the spinous processes of the spine. If you think 
this is the top of the spinous process and the spinous processes are like big bony fingers that come up up the spinal column. Um, these can be anywhere from 12 to 18 inches long. So maybe in this horse they're only 12 inches long. Maybe in another horse like one that I had they're 18 inches long. Well that's a 6 inch difference. So that horse with the longer spinous processes is going to have a higher wither but it still should be covered in muscle. Yeah. It still should not have this big drop off like this. They should not have that. Like I can show you my um, Corona Cartel mare and then my Pepe San Badger gelding and they're totally different. In, but both of them have big full withers and big full backs. There's none of this, this shoulder's not pulled in, this isn't sticking out, there's no big drop off here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's all muscle atrophy and these three points here are saddle fitting points. That shows you that your saddle's not fitting. And these people go on about these white hairs and stuff and what that white hair there shows me is that this saddle is about that far too far forward. That's been there for long, that's not new, that's <clears throat> been there <clears throat> yeah. when, when well, they broke her. What this tells you is that she's had something going on for a long time because by the time you get white hair, it's a long way down the track yeah. that the horse has been dealing with it, you know. Some yeah. people think but that the only... it comes from bad pads, bad saddles, bad... bad... Usually bad pad <laughs> saddles is what it is. Um, but that's the back of your horse's shoulder blade right there. And your, your horse, and I don't know where it came from, but people think that a horse has to carry weight on his shoulders. And I don't know why they think that. Because once you understand the anatomy of the horse and understand how he naturally travels, he can't carry weight on his shoulders. He has to carry it behind his shoulders. I mean, they're not, they're not designed like us. They're a system of pulleys. Um, the front shoulder, the shoulders are suspended be between, you know, either side of the rib cage. There's not like a, a bony of attachment. It's all a system of pulleys. It's all muscle, tendon, and ligament attachment. Does so, that make sense to you? <clears throat> yeah. I'm just imagining all right, if you don't quit. And it takes a it takes a good while to get everything back the way mm -hmm. it's supposed to, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so you keep your saddle back here? Behind the shoulders, yes. You know. So if it, if it sits up here and it looks like it's straight, the girth is straight down through here, mm -hmm. you still pull your saddle back. Yeah, the, the problem no. is that most girths are set too far back. They're set an eighth rig, which is under your fender, mm -hmm. which makes you have to put your saddle up yeah. on their shoulder. Because you want to. You well, want your girth to. is always going to run straight. No yeah. matter. You can set it crooked, and as soon as that horse moves, it's going to run straight. That saddle yeah. is going to move to where that ladder go runs straight up and down. That's just yeah. how it's going to be. So what you have to do is you have to be able to move your girth further forward and the further forward you can put your girth, the further back you can move your saddle. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, people have a lot of problem with, you know, saddles rolling and stuff. Saddles roll because they're too narrow. Because the saddle is sat up on top of that horse and it's skating around. Your, the bar of your saddle has to have even contact through this muscle here. And that's the only way a horse can carry that saddle efficiently and without getting himself sore is if it's even pressure. When you get something that's really, really tight in the middle, that's gonna cause this pressure point right here to become sore and then it causes fibrous tissue and the muscle starts to shorten and that's what sets up that whole horse getting sore. And the longer they've dealt with it, the worse they are. You know? But like if you look 